Okay, let's try an energy balance problem. What we've got here in this blue set of lines is that's a pipe. And the pipe is carrying water. And our water starts at 25 degrees C, which is the same thing as 298 K. And the water is moving through the pipe, and coming out the other side, at a rate of 0 0.5 kilograms per second. That's not a crazy flow rate. It's a useful flow rate. So we call that m dot. We call 298 t in. And my question to us is what is t out? We have some electrical tape, uh, electrical heating tape wrapped around this pipe and it, when it's turned on, is capable of delivering heat uh, coming into the system at a rate of, let's see, what do we think? Let's have it come in at 10 kilojoules per second. That's the same thing as 10 kilowatts, by the way. All right, so how are we going to solve this? Well, we know that in minus out equals accumulation, and in this case, we are not accumulating any energy. All we're having is the temperature of the water change, so that means energy in, which is our Q, has got to equal um, the energy, well, the energy change in the water. And the energy change in the water is described this way. Heat capacity times the amount of water you have coming in and water going out, T out, minus m dot t in. Now, you'll notice m dot in both cases is the same. There isn't extra stuff coming in or out of the pipe, so we could pull that out in front of the CP if we want to. But here is what we've uh, got to solve, and this CP is the heat capacity. or the specific heat. And uh, let's, go, uh, let's go look that up. Let's get a value for that, for water. The CP depends on what stuff you are using and can also depend on what temperature it's at, uh, but may be approximated as a constant, which is what we're going to do here. So we are going to uh, go look that up. Meet you on the next slide. Okay, let's see what the web can tell us about the heat capacity of liquid water, because that's what we've got here. So I've Googled that. And here we have a bunch of choices. And uh, here, really, our best choice is this thing called Engineering Toolbox. I recommend it as a place to look. The upper classmen will tell you that, too. And, wow, look at this. We can be waiting for it to load. All right, here we are in the Engineering Toolbox. We've got lots of properties of water here. But what we want is CP, uh, which I was referring to as heat capacity. But you can see here, they're calling it specific heat. That's another name that works for this. Uh, and you'll also notice that here's a bunch of different temperatures, uh, and the value changes slightly, not a huge amount, but uh, changes slightly with temperature. So since we're starting at 25 degrees C, and we're going to increase the temperature from here, why don't we pick a nice number in the middle there? So why don't we say 4.18 is the value we're going to use, and the unit set is kilojoules per kilogram K. Okay, let's see what happens when we use that. Okay, here's the equation we're trying to solve again. So let's uh, start putting in values. Our Q dot is 10 kilojoules per second. M dot, which is the liquid flow rate, is half a kilogram per second. Heat capacity is, as we just looked up, 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram K, and then T out, we don't know, so that stays there as our algebraic variable, and T in um, is, well, we should write it in K, right, because the rest of our equation is in K, so we're going to write down 298K, which is the same thing as 25 degrees C. Okay, so I have one equation and one unknown. Here's my one unknown. So it's a matter of algebra to uh, rearrange this. 
and turn it into something I can solve for. I'm going to do that here. I'm going to just kind of write this out uh, quickly. Those of you who have all your algebra lined up in your head can just fast forward a little bit, but those of you who like to see how this works, you can sit through this part. So I'm dividing through by my constants, and then I'm adding, and that should be solved for t out. And a good thing to check right now is our units, and I apologize that's a little messy, but I'll switch colors so you can see this. We have a kilojoule on top here, and it crosses with a kilojoule on top down there. We have a second here, which crosses out with that. We have a kilogram here, which crosses out with that kilogram. So what I'm left with is a K, and that's important because I can only add a temperature to another temperature. I can't add an energy to a temperature. So my units work out, so that's good. So now all I have to do is grab my calculator and throw all these numbers in there, which I'll hit pause and do. All right, and what I get out of my calculator is this. Oh, it's in red still. That's okay. 4.78 K plus... 298k equals T out. So that is our temperature goes up by nearly 5 degrees and we end up with a temperature of 302.8 I'm rounding K. So it got a little bit warmer uh, coming through our box. Boom! There we go. And that, my friends, is an energy balance.